everyone. As you just heard, this is being recorded for Stowe TV. Um, welcome. I'm Tina McAndrew, the director of the Randall Library, and we're here again for another session with Sustainable Stowe. Um, please, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things, if you could stay muted, but please feel free to ask questions in the chat or raise your hand or your virtual hand if you have a question. And after the speakers are finished, we will be fielding those. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Sharon. Hi, I'm Sharon Brownfield, a member of Sustainable Stowe, and I've been so excited to partner with Tina on these series. And this particular topic is uh, one near and dear to my heart because I don't know of all the places uh, in Stowe that one can go and explore and uh, walk and um, just enjoy with the family or friends to do that. So we are really very fortunate tonight to have two people extremely knowledgeable about our town resources. And the first person who will be speaking will be Jackie Gorin, who is the assistant, uh, conservation assistant, uh, working with our conservation commission and um, who've been very active in preserving some of our forests as well as maintaining them. Um, our second speaker will be Janet Moffin, Moffat, and this is from the Stowe Conservation Trust. She is both a member of the board of director as also, all, uh, and also a member of the Stu Crew. And if you're not familiar with the Stu Crew, that is a group of volunteers who go through to do stewardship of uh, the properties that they have particular responsibility for. So without further ado, I'd like to have Jackie lead us in our enlightened presentation. Great, thanks, Sharon. I'm just gonna share my screen here. So thank you all for coming and having me tonight. Um, first, I just wanna thank Jonathan Daisy of Stowe TV. This is actually his aerial image of Town Forest. I encourage you to check out his aerial photography of Town Forest, it's really beautiful. So um, my name is Jackie Goring. I'm the conservation assistant for the town of Stowe. I've worked in Stowe for nine years. Um, our office is staffed by myself, Kathy Sfera, our conservation director. We have a part-time land steward who does a lot of our trail maintenance and tree removal and two seasonal trail stewards that work with us in the summer. Um, so we staff the seven member conservation commission, which is an all volunteer board of residents. Um, <laughs> just like you all who are here, um, the conservation commission has two main functions. They overview wetlands permitting. Um, so any work that's done within 100 feet of wetlands or 200 feet of ponds and streams and rivers requires st state wetlands permitting. Um, so that's one arm of the Conservation Commission's um, job in Stowe. And then we also own and manage conservation land. We are the largest landowner in Stowe we own over 1,700 acres of land, conservation land. We manage that land, create and enforce regulations for that land use. We monitor their boundaries and create and maintain trails. The Conservation Commission also um, holds conservation restrictions and agricultural preservation restrictions. So CRs and APRs. Those are restrictions on development. So the land is still owned by the landowner, but um, the ability to actually build on them um, is restricted so they can no longer be built. Um, I have also the responsibility of managing the community gardeners, which Janet is one of my community gardeners. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, so here is the open space map, the most recent for the town of Stowe. Um, this shows all of the open space lands in Stowe. This green color here, which is kind of a limey green, is what's owned by the town. There's also private land trust and landowner land that's in this pale green, including the Stowe Conservation Trust. Um, we have state land at Delaney, which is dark green, and also a portion of the Marlboro Sudbury State Forest is in Stowe. And then our federal partners at the refuge, Asbet Wildlife Refuge, is in this darker green here. So to highlight a few of the Conservation Commission's properties, 
The one probably most well known is Town Forest. It's 366 acres off of Bradley Lane. Um, it's a large parcel, our largest, with an extens extensive trail network. Um, a beautiful walk up to the top of Gardner Hill. There's also views of Elizabeth Brook, the Assabet River, river and there's a campsite um, right at the river for scouts. Then next up would be Marble Hill. That's 249 acres between Great Road and Taylor Road. Also an extensive trail network with various forest types, um, some more challenging trails if you're interested in more cardiovascular <laughs> efforts. And then we have Captain Sargent, which is 197 acres of woodlands, wetlands, and farmland. And that is also where our community gardens are. And Captain Sargent is located in and around South Acton Road and Tuttle Lane. And then our last, last largest pieces I'd like to let you make sure you all know about are Flag Hill and Heath Hen. Together, there are over 250 acres of land. They're two separate properties. Um, also very varied woodlands. Um, and Heath Hen is probably our wettest property with lots of wetlands and vernal pools. So to find our trail maps, you can go to the Town of Stowe website, stowe-ma.gov. And under the government tab, go to the Conservation Commission page. On the left side, we have conservation lands and trails, and that's where all of our trail maps are located. You can just click on a property and it'll bring up the property um, trail map. We also have kiosks at every property with the trail map, so you can take a picture of it on your phone when you arrive at the parking area, but you can also have it on your phone. But tonight I'd also like to kind of identify a few of our newer properties. Those are our properties we've had for a long time and many people know about and use them. Um, first, I can mention Halleck Point, which is an interesting new property we have on Lake Boone. Uh, this is a large parcel of land, the, probably one of the largest, especially in Stowe, left of undeveloped land on Lake Boone. Proposed, there were three existing homes and proposed were, uh, was a seven lot subdivision. The town working with, the, um, with a developer, they sold off the two front lots and was able to conserve the rest of the land. And there's a nice trail loop there. Um, you can park across Sudbury Road at the Marlboro Sudbury State Forest um, parking lot that's owned by the Department of Conservation and Recreation, cross Sudbury Road and do a nice loop around Halleck Point. At the tip of the point, there are picnic tables um, that yours truly <laughs> helped build and install. Um, and then there's also a canoe and kayak landing area. We have the town um, beach or the town, excuse me, boat launch that's over here. Um, but this is a nice landing area for canoes and kayaks. And if you walk on this side of the trail, you'll see lots of beaver acti activity. One of the largest beaver lodges I've ever seen um, and very active beavers, just constant tree um, trees being felled by our beaver friends down there. So I encourage you to check that out. It's a pretty short walk. Um, relatively level. It's a nice, it's a beautiful, um, nice walk through the woods around the lake. Next up is Assabet Overlook. Um, another seven lot subdivision, but a little bit different. Um, this was a planned conservation development off Sudbury Road um, on Joanne Drive. So they were able to waive zoning board requirements for lot size um, and make smaller lots and donate the rest of the land to the town. Um, there are some really great, beautiful views of the Assabet River. There's a large um, hill that you can climb up and look out over at the river. And then there's also a small spot, a wildlife viewing area that you can sit. This, it's just a beautiful spot. There's actually a tree that nature took care of and made a bench for you all ready for you to sit down and enjoy. It's, it's really beautiful. So I hope you've all heard about our other most recent property that we've acquired the Stowe Acres Golf Course. So um, the, so the South Course has a conservation restriction. So the town doesn't own it, but they own a conserv conservation restriction that's co-held with the Stowe Conservation Trust. So it, um, they can continue to, they own the property, the golf course, they can continue to have golf, but it can't be developed as a subdivision or anything like that. It can continue to be used for recreational purposes, for golf and for conservation use, but there'll be no um, development there. 
So uh, last summer we built with our myself and Kathy and our land steward and trail stewards built three mile loop through the woods at Stowe Acres that we've named um, the Mapledale Trail to honor the history of Stowe Acres as um, Mapledale Golf Course was the first black owned golf course and country club in the US. Um, so we have wonderful history here in Stowe and I encourage you to go to the town's website um, there's a lot of information there about the Mapledale Golf Course, um, and I encourage you to go for a walk. You have beautiful views of the Aspet River there too. Um, it's a really nice area. You can park at the driving range, walk across Randall Road and do the whole loop. Um, and then also, I'm, I'm hoping you're all hearing about the North Course Master Plan. The town has um, purchased two thirds of the North Course um, for both wetland restoration, conservation land and recreational use. We're still um, running the master plan and looking for people to have their input. Please visit the town website. There's right on the main page of stow-ma.gov is a Stow Acres tab. Um, there's actually an ongoing survey you can take, um, a mapping program you can use to give us your ideas of what you would like to see there. So I encourage you to check that out as well. So I mentioned the community gardens. Um, they are at Captain Sargent Conservation Area on Tuttle Lane. We have a combination of perennial plots that the same gardeners rent out year to year. They keep up fencing, grow perennial plants. Then we have annual plots that are plowed and harrowed in the spring and fall. Um, so you get a fresh slate of new dirt every year. Um, we have many returning gardeners that really prefer their annual plots. And then new to last year, we installed nine raised beds um, with ARPA funding from the town for its COVID relief funds that were federal funds. Um, we applied to the town um, for funding to put in nine raised beds that are meant to be used by gardeners who are mobility challenged and may not be able to garden a traditional gardening, um, a community garden plot. So we have 80 community garden plots here in Stowe. They're 30 by 50, half plots are 30 by 25. Um, and we have about, on an average year, somewhere between 50 and 60 gardeners gardening those plots. Some gardeners have two plots and some don't, um, don't get used from year to year. We have extra annual plots every year. So I encourage you to check out the town website and go to the community garden page. The applications are actually up now. Um, we will have available perennial and annual plots. It's unlikely we'll have any raised beds, unfortunately, this year. Well, fortunately, because we had nine that were rented out last year and we expect all of them to return. It was a big hit. So I encourage you to look at the applications and consider if you have a green thumb or you'd like to learn more. It's a great community atmosphere, um, great way to be outside, exercise, be out in the sun, um, grow your own fresh fruit and vegetables and also flowers for your own enjoyment. So I encourage you to check that out. And then I wanted to just provide a little bit information about as the conservation department and the conservation commission and how we manage our land. It's a lot of work owning 1700 acres of conservation land. We have to do a lot of trail maintenance, invasive species work, which could be a whole nother topic for a library um, sustainable stow um, meeting. We we definitely have an ongoing issue with invasive species all across the state, across the U.S., with both plants and animals, mostly pests and insects um, coming and impacting our our native plants and animals. And then um, we also do boundary monitoring. So this picture in the lower left is actually an example of where someone was dumping their yard waste on our land. We have people dump trash, we have to clean up. Um, and then we also do our enforcement of our regulations. So we're out walking on the trails, making sure people are picking up after their dogs, using leashes where they're required. Um, it's a lot of work maintaining our land. This picture over here is of our land steward who is cleaning up one of hundreds of trees that fell across our trails in, a, in a, uh, just a thunderstorm in the beginning of September this past year took three weeks for us to clean up all of our trails with all hands on deck. Um, hundreds of trails fell, uh, trees fell across our trails, while many, many others um, fell on our properties but did not actually block the trails. But this was a common scene that we spent days and days and days cleaning up. So just so you know, so I, you know, Janet will talk about Stu Crew. We do the majority of our work with staff. And then I wanted to just talk about 
our recreational opportunities. So our conservation land, our town-owned conservation land can be used for walking and hiking and cross-country skiing. Birding is very popular, especially at the community gardens. Um, uh, cycling on our colored mark trails, horseback riding on our colored mark trails, fishing where um, state regulations allow it, photography, our community gardens, we have picnicking spots, and we also have scout programs um, that are always using our land. Things that we are not allowed to use on conservation land are things like motor vehicles, there's no hunting allowed, camping and campfires without a permit. Um, everything is, you know, pack in, pack out. We don't have trash cans, um, collecting of any sort. All of our trails and properties should be used um, in daylight. We don't have any night use. And um, creating and marking your own trails. Um, and also smoke, no smoking is allowed, and you're not allowed to use our properties for commercial use. So an upcoming event that we actually have this Friday, um, we, we've kicked off this year in 2024, um, a hike every fourth Friday of every month. So fourth Friday walks at 1 p.m. Our next one is this Friday, the 23rd at 1. We'll be doing wildlife sign and tracking at Captain Sergeant Conservation Area at the main parking lot on South Acton Road. It is going to rain, but I'm hoping not heavily. And I don't think we'll be doing any um, tracking in snow. There isn't any left, but we might be able to do some in mud. So we might, and there's other ways to look for wildlife. So I encourage you to register. You can email me at conservation2 at stow-ma.gov. And my email address is on the website. Um, we're asking people to register for these events. And then also, I know there's plans for another sustainable stow talk about stow acres on May 15th. So I encourage you to attend. So I showed you in the beginning our open space map and talked about a lot of our conservation land partners. And as I mentioned, we work closely with the Stowe Conservation Trust. Um, we also have additional land trusts in Stowe like Sudbury Valley Trustees that are regional land trusts. Um, the state, both Mass Wildlife and the Department of Conservation and Recreation, and of course, um, our federal partners at ASVET. And this photo over to the right is a boardwalk um, that is 370 feet long that was completed this past summer that connects um, Captain Sergeant Conservation Area to, which is owned by the town, to Red Acre Woodlands, which is owned by Stowe Conservation Trust. It was a missing link um, of an amazing trail network that we've now closed that can connect you um, through Red Acre Woodlands. This is the boardwalk here on our trail map. Um, around the community gardens and all through this conservation land um, that is Captain Sergeant Conservation Area and conservation restrictions um, by private landowners. What's amazing now is you can walk from Lower Village and Town Forest um, all the way through Red Acre Woodlands, through Captain Sergeant, up into Flag Hill um, using conservation restriction land that we have trails on and the Stowe Conservation Trust has trails on. Um, through Flag Hill all the way up into Boxborough. So we have a huge network of trails here in Stowe that you can get around. And again, our, our maps are all on our website. So we kick it off to Janet. That's literally the boardwalk to the trust. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Jackie. Let me get the right one. Go. So um, I'm Janet Moffitt. Uh, can you hear me? Is it good? Um, I'm one of the directors on the Stowe Conservation Trust. And um, the Stowe Conservation Trust is anybody in, um, in Stowe who's interested in preserving Stowe's um, land and natural and scenic resources. So if you're not a member, please feel free to become a member, become involved. What do we do? Um, we have a lot of trails that we ha maintain and, and make. Uh, this one happens to be in Red Acre, and you can either go to the community gardens or to Red Acre Woodlands. So um, we work with um, private property owners on conservation restrictions and the town as well. Those are typically, uh, some are available 
um, if there's an easement for walking over and some are just people permanently conserving their land, we will, um, we have a crew that monitors them with the town often, or um, if we have the conservation restriction as a group. Uh, we do work with the Town Conservation Commission quite a bit. So we were, uh, uh, we raised $100,000 towards the, uh, conserving Stowe Acres. We helped with the raising of funds for Halleck Point, for example, Carver Hill. Um, most of the properties Jackie went over, we had, uh, we had some assistance with over the years. And um, just putting in a plug that for sustainable stow, that a lot of this has uh, benefits are not just health to us personally, but also climate resilience in the ability of trees to absorb the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and as they grow um, to in hopefully increase the carbon dioxide. But it's a con ongoing question on climate resilience. So I would like to um, point you to Stowe Conservation Trust website, which is conservationtrust.org. And the, um, particularly if you're interested in the trails and wanting to get outside, we have this awesome page Jeff Riddison put together for us. He's on the, on the board as well. These are the properties uh, SCT owns and has trails on, and you can click on one of the um, trees. I always want to click on the properties, but click on the trees, and you will go to the website for specifically for that location. So um, I kind of think it's great to um, figure out where you are in town. And maybe you can just walk to a property, what's nearest to you, are you up for a longer hike, a, short, a shorter hike, but you can use um, this to sort of decide where to go. Um, at, at these sites, you will find pictures, um, what to look for, a, a short um, description, including where the pull-off is. So for Red Acre Road, it's on South Acton Road, half a mile on the left when turning off of Great Road. Um, and you'll find a trail map. So this one has um, several boardwalks along. You have some loops. The It's color coded for um, what color the trail markers will be. And it connects over to community gardens which Jackie was talking about. And as she pointed out, you can go over a whole bunch of town um, using uh, the red, starting at Red Acre or even Brad, um, using Red Acre as a, a cross piece. So let me see. I also wanted to talk about Leggett Woodlands. Um, where we ha have um, a particular trail for young people. So getting outside is not just important for adults, but getting um, kids out to get used to the woods is um, just a great way to go. And, the, and we have a nature discovery trail there. So this is Whitman Street right off Gleasondale. There's a nice little parking lot here that's maintained. And um, if you go along, Here's the entrance to the um, into Leggett. You see nice wide trails. I will advise you to wear boots if it's wet out because the trails can get muddy. Um, as you go along, you come to a little music station where um, you and the kids can play um, on um, xylophones. Um, uh, it's a lovely area, both in the sun and in the uh, in the snow and and in the summer. We have a sculpture area where, if you as you walk along the paths, you'll find different small sculptures made by Linda Hoffman, and um, we invite anybody to add to the sculptures, make them more natural. Um, it is a lovely, peaceful place 
to, to walk along. And then across at the fork, you can go along on the story walk uh, where there's 12 to 14 posts and each one has one page of the story uh, written up. Currently on the story walk, we have H Hector Fox and the map of mystery. It's got awesome graphics. Um, it's by Astrid Shekels, who I guess lives in the Berkshires. Um, but you can see as you go along a couple of things. One, um, the the posts are, are geared for young people. There is um, some wet around it as I mentioned, um, and it's just very fun to go from one post to the next. I I know when you have little kids, they don't always have a lot of patience. They're sort of trying to find exciting things. And so um, the story walk gets some reading and running around. There's also a picnic table if you want to hang out and read some books. Um, so those are two of the properties. We also have uh, multiple ones, and I encourage you to use the trail guides that are on the website. Uh, our current project that we're really uh, hoping to complete in the next year is another boardwalk, much like the very nice one Jackie was showing. And this boardwalk would be on the Shepherd property. So the Shepherd property was purchased um, by SCT with assistance from Stowe Conservation Commission, CPC funds, and um, Acton Conservation Trust in, I think, 2016 or 17. We had nice trails, and we were ready to do an opening day walk and went back and looked, and this bridge was in, in the middle of the water, and um, thanks to the beavers. So there's... <laughs> If any of you know, the beaver pond keep growing and growing. Uh, it actually was breached recently in the big rain, but the beavers are um, busily be uh, building it back last time we looked. So to get across the land, we have um, the permits needed to build another uh, boardwalk. So this was the Stu crew working to build the bo boardwalk um, here, wait, let me get myself. Here's the completed boardwalk. So this is the uh, uh, Captain Sergeant Red Trail. And on the Captain Sergeant map, it, there's a big X. Don't go there because the trails aren't um, passable. We have So we have completed this boardwalk. We want to build, um, I always forget the, the number of feet, like a 160 foot boardwalk here, um, a smaller one over a wet area, um, and, a, and two smaller ones. We have an existing boardwalk, um, thanks to uh, an Eagle Scout, Noah Travelent. And um, then you can walk, continue to walk the trails going over here, where you actually get to the the beaver dam is pretty exciting to see it up close. It's a big one. Um, and then coming around on this lovely loop. So we will be um, looking for um, donations. It is a $60,000 project to get it constructed with um, all the metal posts and the woods and everything. Um, and so our annual appeal letter comes out right before Earth Day. And um, part of our focus will be on the, on the Shepherd Boardwalk. Um, oops, I think that. So actually, go back. OK, and just some heads up. Uh, personally, I love being outside. I am um, some people. Uh, worry about being outside because um, of the dangers. Um, they worry about their kids, but uh, I always think if we let our kids play athletics, there's dangers, all kinds of dangers playing athletics or riding a bicycle that we just have to be aware, um, both for ourselves and for them. Please always 
check for the presence of ticks. Be aware, don't be afraid. Um, they do, they are out any time of the year, sadly. Now I've gotten them in January on one of the warm January days. And so has my dog. Um, they do like warmer spots to check. So um, behind the ears, in the hair, pelvic groin, uh, groin behind the knees, but between the toes, I've never gotten them, but I've definitely gotten them um, a, a wide variety of places. And also be able to recognize poison ivy. Uh, this is what it looks like when it has leaves. The, um, the vines without the leaves um, are also contain the oil. Uh, that is, I can tell you that <laughs> personally from trying to start a garden in a poison ivy patch. So, um, but this is the leaves of three and it's not, there are other plants that have leaves of three. Uh, notice these have some teeth to them. Um, they're usually shinier at the beginning in the spring and the fall, they often are red. So um, just know what you're looking for and, and, um, and have a good time. So we would love it if you and your friends and um, new people to Stowe want to be a part of our success. We know that one of the reasons people um, come to Stowe is because um, they love how green it is. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with Stowe Conservation Trust as a part of a team of, of people, the Conservation Commission. Um, we partnered with Sudbury Valley trustees, uh, all kinds of uh, um, the CPC. So uh, one possibility to be part of our success is to be part of the Stu crew where the volunteers get together, they maintain the trails. Sometimes we go off into um, fresh a pond and remove uh, water chestnut. Uh, it's actually, here's this kayak laden with water chestnut. We've been really successful over a five or six year period of uh, taking this all green pond and uh, it now looks like a pond. So, um, and uh, just like Jackie was showing how after the September fall or the September storm, they had to go out. Our stew crew also has to go out on our, on our land and clear um, pages. So to join stew crew, um, you can email stowconservation.info at gmail.com. And our, our fearless leader, John, uh, will, uh, San Germano will get back to you. You can um, join our Facebook page, which I'm not on, I, I um, just walk along. And um, there's a lot of SCT uh, information, some from the town. We also have wildlife information shared and you can donate. You can become a member and donate um, or just, well, if you donate you're over $25, you are a member of SCT for the year. And um, that I will stop sharing and see if there's any questions. Well, thank you very much, both Jackie and uh, Janet. Um, so I'd like to open it up for questions. And uh, since we're a relatively uh, small group, if you wanna just raise your hand, um, we can certainly entertain any questions you have. I guess I'll start it off with one question I, um, and Jackie, I think you prompted uh, it, and certainly uh, you've mentioned, obviously there's a lot of maintenance that goes around for the trails. And I'm wondering how climate change and um, this erratic weather we've had, like 
rain, rain, rain all the time, uh, or that how that has impacted uh, the work that you have to do in terms of maintaining the trails. Yeah, thanks for asking that question, Sharon. It's a great one. I could probably give an entire hour long presentation on that alone. So just in my time here in Stowe, I lived in Massachusetts my whole life, but just in my nearly 10 years here, we've seen an increase in intense storms. And that's what they're forecasting for the state of Massachusetts, not only increase in temperature, but increase in frequency and severity of intense storms, whether it be um, thunderstorms in the summer, rainstorms any time of year, apparently we've had, um, this year has actually been um, one of the wettest um, in recent years. We have been monitoring um, a well site that's in act and the information is publicly available um, through federal um, websites. And there's a well that's being monitored that was put in in the early 60s and the water table is higher right now than it has ever been with the exception of one year in 2011. So um, it's a, been a very wet winter, very unusual. We've been dealing um, in, I think it was 2017, 18, we had a heavy ice storm that had similar damage to our forests. So weather obviously is a concern, climate is a concern for our forests, but then you add in um, warming temperatures and what that may impact on the existing tree species we have um, that may not be as tolerant to increased temperatures, um, as well as invasive species. There's a multitude of invasive plants, but also insects that um, are threatening our trees. So it, as climate change um, becomes more severe, and you know, there's no really denying it now. People are seeing it. Um, it does increase our workload quite a bit. Um, to have to stop all work, we do, you know, our own our own work uh, aside from managing trails, and put in this summer um, three weeks of trail cleanup was not something that was on our calendar. <laughs> thanks to climate change and one thunderstorm, it wasn't even a hurricane or, um, and it just, just seemed to hit in particular two of our properties really severely. So um, it is something that even if there's a small storm, then we're going out, we're walking our trails, making sure that there's no hazards for the public. Um, but that was a really intense storm that, um, as you all are aware, people were without power in that section of Stowe. So it, it, it has increased our workload quite a bit. Okay, um, sort of switching. Um... <laughs> I'll just, I'll ask probably the impossible question. Um, and I'll go to Janet first. Uh, of your properties, what's one of your most favorite properties to walk? Uh, well, I, I did talk a little bit about Leggett, so that's an awesome one. Um, and I really like Hale Corzine or Red Acre. Um, those are my two most common ones. So what? Hale Corzine is uh, off of Hudson Road, Walcott to Edge Hill. Mm -hmm. And it's a um it's a lovely hike in down a hill along a lovely uh, a marsh. It's really interesting to travel by um, that has a lot of unusual species. Uh, and then around there's a beaver impacted area, some really um interesting beaver trees, a uh, couple those poor beavers, they worked so hard to cut through this tree, this big, as the tree fell, it, it hit another tree, so they couldn't even get what they wanted after all that work. So it's just really interesting to sort of look and see the life of the beaver as you go around. Um, and there's, uh, so both of those, so hail Corazine is lovely, Leggett and, and Red Acre would be my preference. Right. Jackie, what about you? Oh, that's a really hard one. I think I like Marble Hill for its varied forests. You could walk through the trails and see a hemlock forest, um, hardwood forest. It's it's very varied as you walk through. And some of the trails are more challenging. Um, and then I love Town Forest for, although I go there and um, I'm often interacting with dog walkers that are violating our, our regulations about dogs. 
Um, I do love walking there. It has some really interesting views. There's a fen there, which is an unusual um, ecotype that it's not a bog, but it's a fen. Um, it's a really interesting wetland that has um, very interesting plants that are only found in that specific um, type of, of wetland. So that's really cool. And then I love the community gardens. I love it for so many reasons. I love to see the community aspect of it. And um, it's not just Stowe residents, it's residents from all surrounding communities and some even farther than that, um, that come and, and grow. And it's really truly a community group. And there's also awesome birding there. I love to bird um, and there's lots of interesting birds to see, so. Well, I, I'll follow up. Does anybody else have questions? Because I could keep going on. <laughs> yes, Rick. So I have I have one. This might be a tougher one. Um, I know that um, there's a goal globally to have 30% of land set aside for wild and natural to, to capture carbon dioxide and so forth. I keep thinking Stowe's got to be past 30% of its land set aside for just natural purposes. Is that true? Or well, when I that's a good question. When I first started here, and I'd like to see hear what Janet thinks, I was kind of told a third, a third, a third. So a third of the town has conserved, a third of the town has developed, and a third is kind of up for grabs. I think between our work with the trust and ourselves, like we're inching that third that's up for grabs more in the way of conservation, but we are seeing some large developments coming up that are in the planning process right now. So um, I'd say we are on track, but um, continuing to make efforts in what's left. There's some really interesting parcels left out there that I won't, won't name, but um, that I think we're <laughs> all thinking about, so. Yeah, and one of the things I've learned over the years on the uh, um, SCT Board of Directors is like the the number of years it may take for a property to go from personal hands to conserved. There was one property, well, the Shepherd property, I think Dick Perkins had conversations for well, at least 15, if not 20 years with the owner before it actually was able to make the transition into conservation land. Um, some are quicker, but usually um, there's a lot of behind the scenes conversations that start. Um, and um, and so it, it is ongoing. And, and Rick, I'm not 100% sure. The, uh, I see Alan and John on, um, on here, so who are also directors, they may remember the actual percent better than I do. I'm, uh, this is John uh, San Germano. The, uh, I've been working on the town's uh, climate action plan. And so I only, I wouldn't know this unless I was recently playing around with it, but the, the town is 38% of the land area is, um, Preserved, so it's it's land that's not going to get used. So that's that fits in well with what you said, that, that like like a third, uh, thirty eight percent, and specifically forty four sixty two acres, is what my that part of the climate action plan says. So forty four hundred acres out of the town's eleven thousand five hundred, or thirty eight percent. And there's all different ways of conserving land, like I mentioned before, and Janet talked about conservation restrictions. Um, there's, you know, full out ownership that the town or the trust may own land. Then there's these conservation restrictions when landowners literally sell away their development rights, um, like Carver Hill. Uh, years of work went into that project with the trust and the town, um, gaining trust with the with the with the orchard owners, um, and being able to keep it in apple orchard, um, but put a conservation restriction that wouldn't allow any construction of homes there. Um, so, and there's also all sorts of um, the APR program, which is a farming program. And then there's the chapter 61 program, which is a tax that doesn't permanently protect land, but it temporarily, um, as long as you keep up on the requirements, um, lowers the tax rate 
um, to avoid development. So, great. So let me throw out another question is, and I assume Janet, you would say the Leggett project, but I'm wondering, uh, Jackie, um, if I had uh, young kids um, and I wanted to introduce them to walking outside and um, probably some criteria, you know, getting outdoors and they hadn't really been outdoors, what property would you say would be sort of the best first uh, one to go to? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say Town Force is a good one if you have kids in strollers. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you're looking for a place to walk them Town Forest. The trails are relatively flat on the Blue Loop and they're wide, but there are a lot of dogs. So I say, you know, to anyone who's not steady on their feet, um, you know, maybe avoid that. But there's also, you could just start really small. I think any property, I have small kids myself, any property is... Um, welcoming to everyone even if you just take a 10 minute ex exposure and you know you might not like never try to make the goal the whole trail loop or I'm going to do you know two miles of hiking with my family say I'm going to be here for 20 minutes <laughs> and we might go 10 feet but let them explore let them look at ask you questions and um you know look at plants you know even just collecting pine cones and leaving them where you found them, but examining them, you know, doing that, like there shouldn't be any property that no one can visit. Um, you know, start, start small for sure. And, and Leggett is a great one. I brought my own kids there and it's, they love it. They think it's, the statues are so adorable. Yeah. My kids used to love um, Heath Hen. Yeah, is, that's a really uh, cool uh, one. Foxborough Road. Yeah. Um, yeah. You go in and, um, you know, within 50 feet, there's a little bridge to play poo sticks on. Yep. You drop a stick on one side, see how long it takes to the other side. You know, it's a three year old. Yeah. That's all you need for 20 uh, minutes. Yeah. And you, and that's it. You don't need to go any further. You're done with your walk. <laughs> that's right. And they've been outside. They've touched some stuff. We also have on our website a link to, um, conservation trail walks you know geared towards seniors or people who don't want to walk long distances the community gardens is a great place to walk you can do the loop around the gardens so i encourage all of you to check out our website again um, and look at that it's there's a lot of like short walks that could be for young people old and everyone in between the new trail off community gardens with the boardwalk so if you, um, is also lovely there's like a one mile loop that goes through the boardwalk into Red Acre and comes back around um, past some water ponds. Yeah, so that's really fun. It is a, a lovely new place to go. So then on the other side, um, what is um, a major warning you would give to anybody going through the um any of the trails the, in terms of uh, what they shouldn't be doing or what um they should pay attention to if they're walking outside ticks I'll let you and take poison that one ivy. first <laughs> yeah ticks and poison ivy um staying <laughs> on the trails i think is really important because yeah. um once you start getting off the trails then new trails start getting built or um, that's where you, actually that's where people pick up ticks is not is going off the trail a little bit. Um, yeah, don't let that like don't let and I think what you, Janet said like don't let ticks and poison ivy scare you away from the woods. Um, there's lots of hazards, but um, you know mostly just following the rules like treating like just what we all learned like whatever you take in take out treat the land the way you know, you would hope your own property be treated. Um, when we deal with encroachment issues and people are dumping their yard waste, I always think like, what What if your neighbor did that? You wouldn't be okay if, if your neighbor was dumping two years worth of their leaves onto your land, so. I want to uh, just say, I, I really appreciate the trail marks. Have you really been improving over the last, the blazes mm -hmm. and the color blazes have been improving over the last se several years. So they're a lot clearer. So you can follow your trail. 
You know, if I'm on the yellow trail or the red trail or the white trail, you can clearly see it. It's great. Great. Good to hear. Yes, Carol. I'm not. Sorry. Um, what are the dog restrictions for both? Yeah, so I'll let Janet talk about trust land, um, but we actually have varying rules for every property, um, but generally dogs can be off leash. Um, it's only two dogs per adult. We ask that you clean up after your dog. We ask that your dog stay leashed at um, in parking lots because it's dangerous for drivers and the dogs to be running around. Um, always and that seems to be when people <laughs> their dog gets out of the car and immediately goes to the bathroom and they don't pick it up um and again two dogs per adult there are a few areas and properties that we require leashes flag hill is one of them um and it's just due to the environmental sensitivity of the property and as also the community gardens and the farm um the tree farm at captain sergeant but we have at every property where um there are requirements for leashes. We have many signs posted saying that leashes are required. So, uh, and always, and if, if you're on a property that like Town Forest that doesn't require leashes, we ask that you carry one. Um, so if you do encounter someone, you can leash up and there won't be any conflict between um, another dog or, or other people. Thanks. Yeah, on the Cell Conservation Trust properties, um, we decided we have no way of monitoring. So um, we um, allow dogs as well, but we don't have any rules related to dogs. Um, but very similar to what Jackie said, as a dog walker, it's really important that you be respectful that there might be people on the trails who don't like dogs. And even though you have a super cute, wonderful dog, that's not how everybody sees it. So, um, do be um, sure that if um, to have a leash is a good idea. Um, it's really irritating to have people leave the um, the messes in the middle of the trail, or even to leave their little bags in the middle of the trail. Um, yeah, I don't get yeah, that. Pick it up and take the bag with you. <laughs> don't huck the poop do into the woods. It's not good for the environment. It's yeah. not good for water quality. Um, you know, dogs eat dog food. They're not wild animals. Um, it's in some cases worse than human waste. So if you pick up after your dog, please do and take it with you. <laughs> Alan. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, Jackie. Long time no see. Hi, Alan. <laughs> um, I've been waiting for you guys to mention two points, but I haven't heard it yet. So maybe I'll quickly do that. One is One is a to do and one is a not to do when we're talking about conservation and conserving lands and still. Um, but the to-do is for any time I'm speaking with the public, I want them to know that the Stowe Conservation Trust is always on the lookout for people who are interested in conserving some or all of their property. Um, and one of the things we do is talk to those people about how that can happen. Um, there are ways to do it um, with tax benefits that are actually beneficial to homeowners who want to see their land preserved in perpetuity. Um, but I know uh, if people contact us, we're happy to talk to them. And I'm sure you too at the Conservation Commission want to do that as well. We're still looking for more properties to conserve. So we want the public to know that. Um, We've got some people on this this uh, call right here. Uh, I see Marsha Rising, um, for example, um, you know, one of our very generous recent donors of some property, and and we thank you, Marsha, for Beautiful that. Beautiful property. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, and then just the not to do. Uh, one of the things that Jackie and I have had occasion to do over the years is monitor boundaries of our lands. Um, and one of the things we look for, of course, is the private landowner that's abutting the conservation land, who for whatever reason decides to take their yard waste um, and toss it over the property line onto our conservation land. And uh, 
typically that means that Jackie's got to now either write some letters or contact the homeowners and get involved to educate them that that's a no-no. Um, and so we, we always want the public to know that where your land borders one of our conservation properties, please respect that, that border and, and, and don't abuse it. Don't throw uh, yard waste over. Don't have your lawn crew mow an extra 10 yards over the line to give yourself a bigger backyard. Uh, we, we, we really want to protect and have an obligation to protect um, the lands that we're conserving. That's what a conservation restriction means, is we've got to protect that property in perpetuity. So those are my two things, the to do and the not to do. Right, thank you, Alan. Um, I had one other uh, question um, and I'm really curious from both of your perspectives, what is some of the most unusual, what is an unusual thing that you've seen I know, uh, Janet, you've mentioned a, a couple times about the uh, uh, beer dam, uh, the beaver dam, and um, how interesting that was and stuff. Um, what is some of the other unusual things or some things that you really found a lot very interesting when you go on your hikes around? So I love identifying the plants and flowers. Um, I have an app on my phone. It's called iNaturalist. And um, I can take a photo and it will tell me what it is, um, which is uh, super fun. I have a, a a bird app. Both of the uh, iNaturalist is free. Um, the Merlin bird app is also free. And what's uh, I end up using it most for is um, it has um, a sound identification. So you can hit, uh, it will listen to the birds and it can distinguish, it can like ignore traffic noises and, and even personal people talking and identify um, with reasonable success what the birds are um, around. So if you're hearing something interesting, and you have no idea what it is, or you're like me, you really want to remember it, but you don't. Um, the Merlin bird app is is like so helpful in identifying stuff. And um, I was going to give also um, the town forest is a great place in spring for wildflowers. Mm. There's big patches of lady slippers and um, other wildflowers that are just very fun to pay attention to, enjoy, and leave where they are. <laughs> Great. What about you, Jackie? My theory about the wildflowers at Town Forest is we have so many there because there's so many dogs and there's so, there's so fewer deer because of all the dogs. That's my theory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the deer aren't eating our lady slippers. Um, so I think most unusual, I. I immediately thought of things, unusual interactions I've had with people, but I'll spare you those stories. <laughs> but I think just the amount of wildlife we have. Um, Kathy Sparrow, our conservation director, is really passionate about using wildlife cameras um, and has done amazing photography with um, wildlife cameras, finding all sorts of interesting wildlife in show. Um, coyotes, foxes, turkeys, geese, raccoons, the occasional bear, deer, bobcat. Um, fishers. I, what's that? Oh, fishers. Yep. And they're not villains. I could give another hour talk about wildlife not being, like, we have to be kinder to fishers and coyotes. Um, but I think my most interesting, and I, I talked about the fen, but um, the amount of river otter we have here in Stowe is really exciting. Um, whenever I'm out and um, one of our properties, Derby Woods, uh, not Derby Woods, excuse me, Spindle Hill, we discovered um, for a few years, we had a family of honor um, that were just having a grand old time. And it was really fun to catch them on wildlife camera and spot them ourselves. Um, they're just beautiful, really fun to watch animals. They're really silly. <laughs> right. Well, I want to open it up for any last questions. Um, I don't want to. And I really want to thank our two presenters. This is great. Uh, oh, yes, Marion, 
you have a question? There you go. Okay. Um, I'd like to know how we can see what the wildlife cameras are taking pictures of. Yes, I should have given a plug in that um, comment. So please go to the Stoke Conservation Commission Facebook page. We also have information on our website, but our Facebook page, Kathy is always posting really cool finds and little clips of videos and things that we find. And if we don't have Facebook, we can You can still, yeah, you can still view it, but we do have some of the photos on our on our website. So if you go to the, through the town website, yeah. Um, stow-ma.gov and go to the Conservation Commission page and hit like us on Facebook. You sh you can still view things if you're not a Facebook user. It'll give you something at the start because I'm not a Facebook user, but I go to the SCT Facebook page all the time and it says you're not a member and I get rid of that and I can I can see yeah. it because it's, it's public facing. And yeah. there's a link on our page as well to a Stowe TV event that um, Kathy Sparrow did about wildlife in Stowe. So you could watch a little video on Stowe TV about that. Thank you. Yeah, she showed a lot yeah. of lovely highlights. Yeah, it's really, the otters, I, I, they're so cute. <laughs> yes. Hi, um, I'm wondering, if, are there ever any programs where a naturalist or a ranger <laughs> Or somebody will walk, will will lead a walk and point out elements of, of the nature that we might not notice if we're just walking ourselves. Yeah, that's what we're doing on our fourth Friday walk. So this Friday is the animal sign and tracking. Um, every month we're gonna have a different topic. We got we started this with the COA um walks with and that folks could sign up on. We were getting feedback like this walk was too long or this walk had too much natural history. So Periodically, we'll have like a really long walk that the focus is just exercise. We're going to do a five mile hike and then others that will be more leisurely that the focus on is on natural history and identifying plants. We might have a bird walk. Um, so keep an eye out for those events. Um, they will be advertised on the, uh, the town website on your. Mm -hmm. OK. And Facebook. <laughs> SCT has them periodically, but um, we don't have anything currently scheduled. Um, a follow-up question, or not a follow-up, but another question is just what what would you ident identify as sort of the the plant species that are most troubling right now in terms of the invasive species? Well, as I've gone into my career, I've kind of accepted that invasive plants are just going to be part of the landscape. There's really no battling them at this point. But um, right now, in particular, any new species that is new coming to stow um, that would be concerned. Like we worry about stilt grass, which is a lesser known um, invasive that is is really predominant. It takes over the entire understory. Um, you know, we we jump to that when we see it. But to us, the hardest to remove and and unfortunately is everywhere is Japanese knotweed. Um, it's a real challenge. Um, and if we see even the the smallest patch where we've never seen it before. It's like, oh, something now. That's really hard to get rid of once it gets established, so. Yeah, it, um, I think it's one of those things that if every person took care of their own yard, um, it would make it a little bit easier for us. So bittersweet I see in people's yards some, um, or, and that once it gets going, it has berries that the birds love and just spread all, all over the place. I see a lot of burning bush, which looks so great in people's yard. And then once it gets into the understory, um, it just sort of keeps growing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the four Bs, burning bush, um, bittersweet, barberry, um, and buckthorn all have berries. And as long as we have birds, we're going to have these plants in our landscape now. Um, but if every homeowner, and, and we do do educational things, if you ever want to contact the office about invasive plants and you know management styles and how to get rid of them, feel free to get in touch. And John San Germano and the Stu crew um, have, uh, John keeps trying not to have Stu crew be 100% removing invasives. Um, but it um, the SCT does go out there and, and monitor and and remove quite a bit. 
And I, I would also like to say um, on your question of leading hikes and stuff, that please, if somebody's interested in leading a hike, uh, know somebody that would be awesome. Um, contact us through the Stowe Conservation Trust info at Gmail. And um, and we can work with people to organize something. Um, we really do like things coming from the ground up. Don't wait for us to um, to do it for you, but we can help you. Um, and whether you're on this, uh, if you're watching on Stow TV, that includes you. And I could do a TED talk on how to identify poison ivy because it comes in so many different forms. I feel like if you're out in the woods with me, I'll, I'll point it out to everyone with me. Like, that's it too. And that, do you believe that is too? <laughs> it takes many forms. Great. Any other questions? Any other? Well, with that being said, again, I want to thank Jackie and Janet. Um, you know, and all I can say is uh, time to get out. And yeah, even in the winter. I want to put in a, th I actually, I'm sitting here thinking, I really want to put a, um, a thank you to all the people who come before. Like I see Marion Scott on the, <laughs> she was with SCT for years, Alan and John, but oh my gosh, I mean, what Stowe is today is because of the work of previous generations um, and what Stowe is tomorrow all depends on us and, and future generations. Um, and so I just want to put in a, how grateful I am for the people who've done the work in the past that um, we can build on and, and enjoy. Sorry okay. to interrupt, but. <laughs> no. Well, with that being said, good night to everyone and good hiking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.